What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jay Mark. We back at it with the tag team with my boy Jay Faded. This one is an exclusive one. So you're gonna get a tutorial with two voiceovers. First part is gonna be by me, and the second part is gonna be by Jay Faded with a design. So first of all, let's get started. How I like to get started with this type of head is I like to comb all the hair um, in the direction that it's flowing naturally. Uh, what I do from there is I take my wall detailers and I make my first initial guideline halfway through the head since Jay Faded is doing it as design on the other side. Then what I do now is I open up my lever all the way open and I'm going about an inch into the head. I'm kind of going over that about two times just to make sure everything's good. Then what I do is I grab my bevels and I'm taking off all that bulk underneath. And just because they are zero gap, like really close to zero gap, I'm going over underneath that guideline and kind of just getting it extra bald. So I prep myself up for the next step, which is grabbing the shavers and taking off any of that hair where that bulk used to be. And I'm not going all the way up towards that guideline. I'm kind of just staying about a little bit underneath that first guy line. What I do now is I grab my five star walls and I'm hitting it notch by notch. What that means is starting with the lever all the way closed. As you get into the fade, you're adjusting the notch little by little all the way until you get back into that fully open half blade. And what this helps with is helping to control the fade, helping to give it a more transition. You can actually watch the fade unravel itself as you're getting higher and higher playing that notch by notch going on now I use my number one guard and I play the same notch by notch I only do this with the number one guard and with no guard on the blade just because I count my number one guard as my detail guard you can really get the most detail out of that number one and like I said I play it the same way start off with the lever close this time working it all the way up into that full open number one going on into my number two attachment I start off same thing but this time I don't play the notch for notch I only like I said I only leave that for the no guard and number one one. This time, how I play it is leaving that blade all the way closed, making another guideline, then I fully open that number two and flick out towards that top of that bulky area. Now, with the half guard, this is a guard you actually really do. I start with the same thing, open and close only. This is a guard you really do have to flick out into the longer hair where that number two was laid down. Um, just because you don't want the fade to go too high, or you don't want it to, you don't want it to be a high fade. It's, it's the mid drop fade. And like I said, that number or that half guard can actually do that you cause you to go a little higher and then raise your fade a little bit towards the top of the head now I'm using my 0.5 guard and I like to call this guard the detail guard simply all I'm doing is kind of just fading out the extra hair that's darker in the area of the fade and just simply detailing out the fade plain with the lever opening or opening and closing the notch taking the 0.5 guard off and I do the same thing I'm detailing out the fade I actually use the corners of the blade a lot just to slit the darker areas I don't want to fade out any dark spots I want to split it just to give it that blurry transition look Remember I said that number one guard is that detail guard and all I'm doing is simply just going back and detailing this even more. Um, I didn't do it, do this during the first time just because of time. I don't want to spend too much time because I could be there for days detailing something else. I want to come back to it and just hit certain spots that I didn't before. And now I'm going into my scissors over comb or shears over comb. These are thinning shears and what I'm doing is just knocking off more bulk uh, towards the end of the top of the head. What I didn't know about thinning shears is that there's a percentage based on how many teeth they do have. Uh, mine's are 25% so that means every time I'm going into that hair and taking off some hair each cut is 25% of the hair gone so before you buy some I suggest you actually do some research to see how much hair uh, you'll be removing with each cut and you can see come or actually you can see the fade coming more to life now all I'm doing is just lining up the front of the hair keeping everything down in its natural position then lining everything up straight across um, how I go about the hairline sometimes I start towards the middle sometimes I start towards the sides that's a little thinner and now I'm to that C cup with that C cup I'm trying to keep it as natural as possible I tend to keep the C cup still um, since this is a, a mid fade
Now I bust out that enhanced brown. Um, these are enhanced fibers, and all I'm doing is enhancing that hairline just to make it pop and hit more harder um, and really give that client that feeling that, that I gotta be seen feeling that somebody has to see this cut. Um, I do use fibers, like I said, to enhance the haircut. I never use fibers to cover up any mistakes or any mess ups. Fibers should not be used that way. You should for sure master the hairline or master um, anything before you use hair fibers. Like I said, hair fibers should be to complement the haircut. So with my process, I'm light on the fibers. And what I do next to kind of just give even more of that pop is I hit it with the airbrush. And this is the same dark brown, dark brown airbrush. And this is just gonna make everything else pop. That concludes my side of the fade. Now let me pass you over to my boy Jay Faded to get these gems.